Hi, everybody. My name is Michael Burtsev, a PhD, a head of laboratory, NLP, um, uh, Moscow Physics uh, University, and I'm going to do to moderate um, NLP uh, session. Uh, we have um, uh, great speakers, um, great content today, and I hope that um, you will learn a lot of interesting and new and useful things out of our session. So, okay, let's um, start the session. And the session uh, will be opened by my uh, presentation uh, where I will make an attempt to um, share um, with you as to how we in the field of uh, natural language processing, um, as to what kind of progress and uh, what um, direction we're moving to and how close we are to AGI, uh, to general artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, let's uh, briefly look at the evolution of um, uh, what has uh, been occurring in um, NLP recently. Obviously, the progress is related to the use of neural um, network models, and you can see this evolution uh, great depicted. First it was um, um, RNN and then obviously for us uh, to process the text we need them because uh, we um, work with um, uh, consistencies and um, uh, and then um, and, and, uh, uh, LSTM, then uh, by LSTM came forward. Then there was a revolution of encoder-decoder appearance when it was uh, complemented with attention system to process natural language and uh, the they were actively introduced um, uh, such production systems um, like uh, machine uh, um, translation and uh, surpassed all other methods before. Today, obviously, we, we are aware of the fact that there's a powerful architecture of transformer, which um, hits all the benchmarks um, uh, to be number one and um, get, get over to computer um, vision. So that's what we have currently from the point of view of the architecture. But it, it's not only the architecture, but the way we train the models and how we prepare them. And uh, here, there was a breakthrough of, um, of the fact that we as researchers uh, went away from using uh, the models of uh, trained uh, for some specific uh, domains and data servers, but to, uh, over to bigger models which uh, uh, are trained in such regime, which is called um, uh, self-supervised. Uh, so that's uh, the regime when we can uh, provide a big number of data uh, and um, uh, uh, the model um, um, recovers the gaps or predicts the next word. And everybody knows the abbreviation BERT, which is uh, uh, the language model, which is analog to uh, autoencoder. Um, um, which uh, allows you uh, to recover, to learn how to recover the gaps um, uh, and masked uh, words. And it turns out that if we train the model this way, then we can easily um, train it additionally to specific do uh, domain. And that's uh, the next uh, huge step to be made in uh, NLP. Uh, we see here that um, there's a progress uh, we are doing. And we started with separate models and separate tasks. Uh, over to uh, universal models. Uh, we are trying to uh, model their, uh, the, the richness of um, the natural language. Uh, so this class of uh, pre-trained models is called um, uh, language models. And uh, currently it's um, obvious that all top results in uh, uh, NLP um, uh, are related to those language models. Um, clear enough that um, to uh, evaluate evaluate the progress uh, in this field, uh, we actively using different um, benchmarks. Um, um, how we know uh, how uh, well um, this um, technology allows us to understand the language? Of course, we will try to test it um, using uh, different tasks. Uh, here you can see an example of um, uh, the glue task, which uh, uh, came last year. It's a set of different tests. Um, and notice Noticeably, 
that uh, usually a solution to the te to a test, um, uh, which um, uh, is the basis of certain uh, of the solution of certain tasks, uh, the basis here is uh, the language models. Um, so we have a universal language model to further specialize it um, uh, to match specific tasks. And when the benchmark was published, and you can see from here. Uh, the table, uh, the leaderboard, and the ratings of different approaches um, used. And you can see from here that uh, red color code that is uh, the way, uh, the, the quality of uh, the task um, uh, a person has. Um, and when the table was published for the first time, the person was number one. Uh, a, hu and a human being was number one. But just after a year uh, or 18 months uh, passed, and we can see that the efficiency of an individual uh, solving uh, different tasks um, um, uh, in uh, NLP and understanding, classifying um, some sentences uh, um, declined. Um, and uh, a human being is number 14 currently, which is not very good, uh, obviously. But And that's why we invented another benchmark, um, realized uh, all those nuances in task solving, which uh, allowed the algorithms uh, to uh, solve better than a human being. And we can see today that uh, for a new test of uh, um, no, um, uh, which is called super glue. Um, uh, the human being is number one uh, um, uh, at the table, uh, at the, in the first line of the table. Um, why is the progress, and why do we have to create um, a new test? Um, which will allow a human being uh, to um, show better performance than the model. Well, seemingly, on the one hand, uh, you can you can think that um, engineers and scientists um, are inventing better algorithms which uh, solve the tasks better, but that's not the case. Uh, the architecture after the transformer is the same. Uh, but what is changed, uh, uh, actually? Let's look at um, what is changed. Uh, and you can see uh, on this graph, um, it shows uh, the way uh, the number of parameters is changing in the models uh, uh, or language models uh, that uh, we train, which uh, come up to top uh, performance. Uh, it starts with Elmer um, uh, and then um, uh, G GPT, uh, followed by GPT from OpenAI, uh, GPT-2, and uh, the number of parameters is growing um, gradually. And uh, here we have um, a model uh, of Megatron, um, which um, which already has eight billion uh, parameters, and you can imagine uh, uh, the size uh, of those models. GPT-2 was uh, uh, fifteen hundred parameters, um, uh, one point five uh, billion, and Megatron uh, now is eight billion para of parameters. So what's next? Um, seemingly, there's um, the sky's the limit. Um, there's uh, um, but that's not the case. Um, uh, it's, it turned out that you can go even further. At the beginning of this year, Microsoft published a model which has 17 billion parameters um, uh, during NLG. And uh, it's, uh, it turned out that it, that's not the limit uh, either. And you can uh, even train the transformer uh, like GPT-3 with 175 billion of parameters. Um, and it seems that uh, it's difficult to stop this kind of progress when the architecture of the model does, is not changed, but the size and the time of training I increases. Um, on the one hand, it seems that the progress is quite um, noticeable and significant, but on the other, y uh, you want to cry. Uh, that uh, not everybody has resources like that to train the model for 175 billion of parameters. Uh, so what um, do we achieve with GPT-3 model? Um, obviously, uh, it has um, a lot of uh, wonderful uh, features. Uh, it is uh, trained um, using huge uh, volume of texts. 
uh, and is capable uh, of uh, so-called uh, zero-shot or few-shot tuning. Uh, it means that we just um, uh, provide on the onset the description of the tasks uh, using the natural language, some short or brief uh, description, and then uh, we request it to follow, um, to continue, and what the model generates is exactly the result. To the left, uh, you can see the graph. Um, uh, which shows how the quality of generation of news is um, changing by uh, the headline, uh, depending on um, how many parameters the model has. And uh, the, the more to the right, the more parameters there are. And we also can see here that uh, this curve uh, goes down which actually is uh, how well the people uh, can uh, differentiate the GPT-3 generated articles and uh, articles written by a human being. And when we take a bigger model, there's no difference. Uh, well, a human being cannot differentiate um, whether it's an article written by a neuron uh, network or by um, a human being. However, um, it seems um, that it can solve whatever. And many might have seen uh, some algorithms um, uh, demonstrations um, uh, who showed um, how you can write a comment to uh, uh, the code which uh, describes uh, the functionality of uh, the code and models which is uh, trained at GitHub and how it can generate a code um, to match the description. It looks quite impressive but on the other hand uh, if you look at and uh, try to analyze uh, how well uh, this model knows how um, to describe the world around us, um, it uh, will turn out uh, that it has a lot of uh, issues with that. And not always it can cope with um, this kind of um, um, uh, deliberations. Um, to the right, you can see examples um, of um, how this um, uh, new network was, uh, had been tested. Uh, to track uh, different uh, substances. Um, uh, yesterday, I dropped my clothes off uh, at the dry cleaners, and I have yet to pick them up. Where are my clothes? And obviously, the continuation of this sentence uh, should be um, that um, uh, it, uh, it is at the dry cleaners now, well, the place where you've uh, left your clothes at. But the model uh, uh, suddenly answers that I have a lot of clothes. Um, and there are other examples of um, wrong uh, conclusions um, by, by the psychological reasoning of the um, people involved in those descriptions or physical objects um, uh, involved. Uh, thus, uh, it's also obvious that the model GPT-3, despite the fact that it's a composite model, which doesn't is not concluded, is not um, uh, does not include uh, several set sets. It uh, demonstrates universality, and you can use it to solve very different problems. It can, as I said, write uh, news articles or a code, or try to continue a dialogue, and this means that if um, we, for instance, talk about uh, the progress uh, in the system of artificial intelligence that uh, they are becoming more and more universal. Then it is obvious again that the GPT-3 model is even more universal than other uh, trained models. Um, Now we've uh, covered with you the NLP. Now let's uh, have a look at another field also related to NLP, which has become very popular, especially uh, recently, um, which is called um, conversational AI. Let's look uh, at uh, what's going on there. Uh, it's clear enough that um, here, uh, while well, the interest uh, to this field and progress is related to the fact that um, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, smart columns and the technology uh, was um, uh, in, uh, sufficient to create those dialogue systems which uh, will be useful to the people. And you can see to the right um, uh, the number of um, uh, conversational skills um, which you can uh, set um, 
uh, into the Amazon Alex. Uh, uh, let's look at the smart speaker as a certain uh, analog of a smartphone. Smartphone uh, has um, applications, and we can also put some uh, third-party um, uh, applications. Um, uh, there are more than 70,000 um, of applications uh, that can be currently uh, installed in such uh, um, column as Alexa. We have Yandex, Alisa, and Sberbank has uh, Salud, and you can also add some uh, new apps. And actually, we can see if we review uh, those smart uh, columns and those um, uh, assistants um, which are inside there as an intellectual agents, we can see that their intellectuality is being developed using two main sources. Uh, uh, the, the first one is the skills and intellectuality, which is already embedded in um, by the developers of the platform. And at the bottom, uh, we show that about 30% of user experience um, are brought by those components, uh, and uh, about uh, 50 to 70% um, of user experience um, is uh, provided by the components, uh, which are created by uh, third-party developers. Developers. And um, uh, 50, 60, 70 percent um, of uh, user experience, so useful things we use in our smart speakers, uh, are covered by the percentage uh, of all the apps uh, that um, um, uh, the, this platform mar marketing has. Uh, the rest, 99 percent, uh, is just useless um, and uh, um, uh, so called dark um, uh, um, material of. Um, uh, uh, this. And if we follow the development of AI in conversational, um, uh, we can see that we thus get more and more intellectual agent uh, with more and more skills um, uh, capable of solving a, a bigger number of uh, user tasks. And this uh, uh, is not, uh, well, it's sort of um, uh, uh, something reverse uh, to this GP GPT when we have only one big model solving all different tasks. Uh, so this approach uh, that we can see in the industry now is very close to what one of the classical um, um, uh, Marvin Mirsky uh, wrote about uh, his theory uh, the, uh, when he said that the brain of an of individual and the personality is a, um, a society or community of cognitive agents, uh, or which uh, separately, uh, each separate um, ha uh, has been selected um, uh, to to, uh, solve the different tasks, and our and this is a community to solve all those tasks. And what we can see here, and how it all matches uh, the uh, AGI uh, with a, uh, and um, uh, general uh, AI. Well, the definition of it uh, shows that it's a hypothetical um, intelligence, uh, a machine, which um, has uh, an opportunity or capability to understand or be trained um, to implement or execute um, uh, different intellectual tasks a human being can also do. And we can see that indeed today we can see two parallel ways uh, um, towards the systems uh, which um, are indeed capable of uh, solving this kind of tasks. Uh, one is uh, building up a universal model like GPT-3, you can see to the right, um, like a, a Swiss knife. And another, the other way is to build up um, um, a system with uh, multiple skills, a multi-skill system, as you can see here um, to the right. And now I'm going to talk um, a little bit about how we are trying to create uh, the systems um, uh, helping um, to implement such uh, communities. Well, I'm going to talk about our uh, Deep Pavlov project um, we are doing at FISTECH together with um, uh, Sberbank, with Sber. And uh, that's exactly the framework to create um, uh, systems, uh, um, conversational systems with multiple tasks consisting of three main components, uh, the Pavlov uh, library, the Pavlov agent, and the Pavlov uh, dream. Let's look uh, at the architecture. Um, 
of uh, this framework, um, uh, you know, to solve uh, uh, what kind of tasks. Uh, in, and the typical skill um, or life cycle of um, uh, this intellectual assistant and how it looks, um, we have several uh, set, uh, a certain set uh, of um, uh, well, uh, we just uh, do uh, well. Uh, MVP, M MVP consists of uh, two parts. Uh, usually, the architecture uh, has a uh, natural language understanding. That's the part which uh, recognizes uh, the um, requests of the user, and the uh, the other part is what um, rules uh, or um, manages the dialogue. We do the MVP, um, which um, uh, solves the task using our toy examples. It's uh, very easy, and we then put it into production, then go to uh, product growth, uh, where we uh, want to cover, uh, to increase the coverage, um, and then we are required to expand the functionality. We do it, uh, adding uh, uh, scripts um, and more and more. So, and then gradually we come down uh, to such a status uh, of uh, mature uh, digital assistants uh, or um, conversational assistants which um, um, looks uh, as uh, uh, though the solution is uh, unmanageable. There are so many scripts and um, uh, components that uh, they are independent uh, uh, of each other. When we change one, the other is destroyed. And seemingly, it's better to break up the whole thing, to build up a new one, a clear cut, uh, understandable from the very beginning. We think that under the circumstances, uh, we should avoid this kind of thing, and we offer the, uh, the solution which will allow us um, uh, to um, distribute or disseminate this uh, uh, complication. Uh, while we um, uh, using the framework, so we build up um, uh, a simple uh, MVP. It's uh, packaged into the conversational, uh, while well, Alexa and Elisa and your system uh, do have um, these things um, to solve uh, just one separate um, skill. And then we uh, add an additional module or conversational skill skill into the agent as Amazon and Alexa to embed and um, your external skill. Similarly, you do your task-oriented uh, narrow domain uh, skill into the system. You now have the system uh, with other skills as microservice, and you have uh, an agent, which is the organizer or administrator of those skills. And then you can scale up your system through adding new skills. And at the same time, if you need to improve functionality of this skill and add uh, some features and uh, enhancing its scripts, you can do it easily. If you need to increase the functionality dramatically, you add new skill. So the whole complexity is under your control totally. And this is a more convenient approach since it is more scalable. You can uh, you can launch these skills as microservices and uh, incre increase the number of instances of these skills. And it is more convenient to develop it through distributed teams where every team is responsible for development of their own component, independent component. There are core teams. There is a core team that is in charge of combination of all these skills into the integrated user experience, comprehensive experience, how to tackle this task, how to execute such systems. Uh, this is uh, the Deep Pavlov framework uh, aiming at the Deep Pavlov libraries, the first part of it, where we have a set of NLP components uh, from which we can create pipelines for tackling such tasks. And these pipelines uh, combine into the skills, and the skills are orchestrated by an agent. So we've um, tested this pipeline and the whole framework in Alexa Prize uh, competition within the framework of which we, over several months, were testing our system under load of uh, several thousands of dialogues per day from American users. And we've accumulated uh, our system have carried, has carried, carried out uh, several thousand, several hundred thousand uh, discussions. And we have pipeline for incoming messages for launching conversation skills for orchestration of such uh, skills and for selection of the reply. So today we we again participate in this competition in Alex Surprise this year, and we again use our framework. It will be worked on, and it will become more and more production rate. And 
Thus, from the point of view of this framework, now we have, as I already said, the library, the Pavlov library. To the left, we can launch conveyors of uh, processing of uh, NLP messages uh, uh, and external NLP models can be can go through the framework and various conversation skills uh, can be executed both in deep Pavlov and also through IML or, or RASA marking uh, wrapped by deep Pavlov and launched in the cloud and we have the Pavlov agent which is uh, the orchestrator of annotators and skills and it allows you in your device or in a text channel to implement the functionality that is important in, for us and that we need. So if we look at the stack uh, of technologies that can be used for development of such such systems with uh, multiple conversation skills, we can see that uh, for implementation of them, we need several layers of this for implementation of this technological stack. Uh, orchestration of skills is at the top level, and today usually such orchestration is done through proprietary platforms like uh, Alexon or Google Assistant. But in open source area, Deep Olive is probably the only solution that allows you to implement such systems. Next level of uh, technological stack is instruments for implementation of um, conversation skills, uh, RAS, Pandora Dots, and the Pablo Dream. And NLP framework for implementation of NLP pipelines embedding the model of deep uh, learning into, into the whole picture and the platforms. Uh, so. Wrapping up my presentation, I can say we can see that uh, the current progress in the area of uh, natural language processing is uh, directing us towards more and more universal systems. And this movement is going through two ways. Uh, so through setting monolith uh, models that are universal, GPT-3, for instance, or, or through the way of uh, so setting up uh, hybrid systems with lots of skills uh, tackling various intellectual tasks. And here, in the area of open source, we are working in Deep Pavlov on creating a framework, uh, engineering technological framework uh, that will allow us to make, uh, to create uh, more comprehensive conversation agents. And both areas are going in the future, are going in the direction for creation of systems uh, that will be able to tackle tasks uh, close to those. Uh, that human beings can tackle today. Okay, I think that's it from me. This is it from my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.